Okay. Dirty, go! Dirty, 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 dirty. Go dirty. Go dirty. Go dirty. The Codex Astartes support this action. Space shift. My game oh. crashed. Mine. Yeah, <laughs> mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the three crashed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Everyone activated the jump picks at the same Wait, time. Wait, everybody's game crashed. Don't you make him crash the three, by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not like that. Oh, oh fuck. It is the forty first millennia, and he just pan into this dude doing all his shit. <laughs> I lied in my bed, and before sleep, I tried to watch. The video about Dawn of War 3, and I just fell asleep. I don't blame you, I don't fucking blame you. That's fine by me, mate. <laughs> That's fine by me. <laughs> I don't blame you for that one. Armor 3 is the third installment in the Armor games, and it's a first-person shooter that tries to incorporate military realism. Whilst other first-person military games lured you into a lobby shooter by a matchmaking system, Armour tries to encourage actual guerrilla tactics like ambushes, intelligence, deception, etc. That sounds very familiar. Caves where you can have squads there to do an uh, ambush or guerrilla type of warfare. I'm not surprised the Eternal Crusade shut down. I should have been a bit more critical of those devs. They could have at least given the game to the people as it's such a waste of work now. At least there's one person with a sense of humour. Yeah, we know you're closing down the servers, but we're still getting Terminators, right? Anyway. For example, creating a thought out battle plan beforehand, talking to other groups via a radio, setting coordinates on a map to get to a certain location on time, and listening to your superior's orders. The game is great if you're looking for a realistic military shooter and the campaign will definitely give you that. Armour 3 can be very demanding on your PC as it's not optimised perfectly and its physics system can be the flip of a coin or a vehicle. However, whilst Armour 3 is good on its own, it opened a gateway for many other IPs. Modding has always been popular in the Armour series. If you've watched my Unification Mod video, you will get an example of how far modding can go to keep a game fresh, or in some cases alive with a community. I used to play the absolute crap out of the Armour 2 Daisy Epoch mod, back in the old Frankie on PC days. It was basically a zombie survival base building mod with PvP. Definitely funny and stupid at times, but I enjoyed every second of it. But that's minuscule compared to the mods Armour 3 has today. Armour 3 modding is not just one group of talented people. Looking at the workshop, there are communities for Star Wars, Halo, Warhammer 40k, Aliens, World Wars, thousands of different mods, and if you can think of an IP that you've always wanted to play in big battles, it's probably here. But of course, I know you're here for Warhammer.
Yeah, there's no way I can let GW see this footage. I was scared to make another video on Warhammer mods. I really enjoyed showing off the unification mod, but I would never forgive myself if bringing a spotlight to a mod would get GW to take action. I just pray that never happens. Warhammer Armor 3 mods are unlike anything I've ever played before. Trying to cram it all into one video whilst being engaging is definitely going to be a challenge, but I'm determined to do it justice. So what are Warhammer Armor 3 mods? It's very easy to watch videos on YouTube, look at the giant titans, space marines, people playing in a server together having fun, and get carried away with all the hype. I will talk about that, but I want to keep everyone grounded that this is a mod. It's one of the reasons I chose to show a crash in the intro because it's not perfect by any means. Warhammer Armor 3 mods are not like a Dawn of War mod where you just download it, install and you're good to play for an hour. There are hundreds of different mods that I refer to when I say Warhammer Armor 3 mods. Some are giant and others can be very small. You also need to take into consideration that Warhammer Armor 3 mods also use other mods on the Steam Workshop. This is why in this video I'm going to explain how this community works first, instead of just showing you me shooting stuff in a titan. Because firstly that just disrespects all the hard work that people don't see, and also gives a false perception of what playing the mod is actually like. Some of the things I'll be talking about in this video is, let me get the list. The modders and the mods, featuring TIOW and the mods history, ICP, AOD, Daddy Web Knight, units, operations, Zeus and Eden behind the operations, how to install or play because there's literally no guide out there. Also, I had like 20 people telling me I should have made a tutorial on the unification mod video. I made one, stop hurting me. And lastly, I'll be showing some gameplay. The first thing I'm going to show you is the people behind the mods, the ones who make this stuff actually happen. The, the vast majority of people, I don't think they know that, you know, it actually takes time to make these things. I think I th they just think that, whoop, you think of it and it pops into right. his head. Let, let's put it in the suggestions channel, you know, he'll yeah. have it done by the evening. Yeah, in reality, yeah. Soup and Rogue, they'll spend fucking hundreds of hours on individual assets and, and, and sit there and fucking rip their hair out because there's a string of code that just doesn't work. We've made the game incredibly diverse for Space Marines um, in particular. And people were coming to us and like, make this, make that. And it's like, you don't understand. It's not, you can't just click a button and click the make this button. It requires a lot of process. And people were just getting really impatient with us. Like, remember, Steve, we stopped modding for like two months because we were working on like some big projects. Yeah. And people were saying our mod was dead. And it was two months. <laughs> And it was, it was just, uh, not everyone's like that. It's a very small minority of people who are like that. I think people forget that a lot of these teams are four or five people uh, just making passion projects. Yeah, we're, we're, just... not, we're, we're not massive studios. We don't have unlimited time. We don't have unlimited money. We have jobs. We have lives. We can't spend all of our time and all of our resources making things for this game. And I think people forget that sometimes. When I first heard about Armor 3 having Warhammer mods, the first thing I did was look for a video of someone talking to the modders, because I wanted to know about the people behind making the actual content. And there was nothing. I think it's obvious to know that us YouTubers make money off our videos, but when we're making videos and money off a mod that people have spent hundreds of hours making without being paid, I feel we owe it to them to give them a spotlight and let them share their side of things. There was clearly a side of this community that no one really sees. I'm still frustrated with myself that I didn't give the Unification Modders a chance to talk in my Unification Mod video, but I'm not making that mistake this time. From my time playing Armor 3, I managed to speak to a few of the modding groups. This has led me to have over 12 plus hours of footage talking to the modders, nearly making my PC explode. Fuck. But it was a great experience speaking to all of them and I truly do appreciate it. The first one I'm going to talk about is There Is Only War and the mod's history. Anyway, talking to TIOW. 
One of the things this gave me is insight into how this all started, and I was able to speak to probably one of the most longest people involved in this community called Gorechild. Gorechild is the head modder of TIOW, also known as There Is Only War, which I will explain in a bit, but he was able to tell me how this all came about. So the original one was Arma 3 40k. Uh, LFH was the head of that project. He had started that team back in Operation Flashpoint. So he had been doing it for a long time. Um, unfortunately, he just didn't ever learn how to mod Arma 3. The origin of Warhammer modding in Arma started in Operation Flashpoint. It was called Operation Flashpoint 40k. This was a team run by someone called Lady From Hell or LFH and other members part of their team. Operation Flashpoint was the first Arma game and the mod added, as you guessed, 40k stuff. A lot of these assets were very similar to Vanilla Dawn of War, but they also had some of their own original creations. How well it runs and plays, I wouldn't be able to tell you, but it was the first step in modding armour for Warhammer. From what I understand, eventually they moved on to Armour 3 modding around 2016, which spawned Armour 3 40k. The Panzer, as you might have heard his name, uh, E50 Panzer on the Discord, he he was very involved with helping us like learn, um, and so we ended up basically like saying, alright, fuck it, we're gonna we're gonna leave and we're gonna make a group with him because LFH refused to like let him take over the project. Armor 340K was still run with LFH at the time with the help of others and a model called E50 Panzer. Gorchar told me that this was around the time he joined the group and learned his skills of the modding trade from E50 Panzer. I started talking to him. This is back in the day of fucking Skype. So uh, we we ended up calling each other on Skype and he basically walked me through like downloading Blender, setting up the tools for Arma, and then some basic, uh, like, learning how to model. And for probably a good two weeks, that man just sat in, in chat with me, like, non-stop teaching me. But as I said, they wanted to go in their own creative direction and left Arma 340k. We, we leave LFH, we create TIOW around that time, because the Arma 340k project really wasn't going in anywhere. TIOW, also known as There Is Only War, is probably the most well-known Armour 3 Warhammer mod. When you type in Armour 3 Warhammer, it's the first thing that comes up. I actually wouldn't have known about the other mods unless someone told me. TIOW being the first major Armour 3 mod was different to Armour 340k as it added a few new things. So Armour 340k had basic blood pack, basic cadians, and when I say basic, man, I'm talking LAS rifle, infantry armour, and I th think there was a rust. Like, there was, like, nothing in it, right? Um, so it had those, and that was about it. Then when TIOW was first made, I had been working on orcs during this transition process, and when we re we released There Is Only War, orcs were in that first, uh, that first wave, and that was the, that was the major thing that separated it from, uh, Arma 340k, and we wanted to do that. We didn't, we wanted the the first release of the new mod effectively to have enough new stuff to hopefully justify downloading. I think like rocket launchers were added. Uh, we replaced the Cadians with death core. Um, there's a couple other things, but the, the orcs were the new faction and we added a lot to them as a result. TIOW released on October 7th of 2017. Over the next few years, the TIOW team developed and added assets to armor three. There is honestly too many to count and show, and I can't really sum it up because they do a bit of everything, from Imperial Guard, to Renegade Guard, Orcs, Tau, Necrons, then in TIOW2 which I will mention they added the Adeptus Mechanicus and a few more things, but the thing that really brought people in of course was the Space Marines. So Panzer was the guy who had started it, he had a lot of help from a, a guy named Horrible Goat. So Horrible Goat isn't part of our team, but the man might as well be. He is like a pillar of the armor like modding community. So he had done some work with skeletons in the past, and when Panzer was learning it, he worked heavily with uh, Horrible Goat in order to actually help implement that. When it came to making the Space Marines, you can't just take an existing rig from a standard human in Armor 3, upscale it, and use that from an Astartes. They have different proportions, so a completely new custom skeleton had to be made. This also meant that every single animation in Armor 3, like crouching, healing, running, all had to be reanimated for its size. For any of you who don't know how rigging and animation works, this takes a long fucking time. But Panzer and Horrible Goat managed to do it. Later down the line, TIOW2 was formed on the 15th of March 2021. The main reason for this was problems uploading the content to the original TIOW on Steam. This added new content to the original TIOW, meaning it was just basically one big mod. 
But throughout the time up to TIOW2, a couple of the modders left to do their own mods, and at the same time, a few new mods popped up. Originally, we had Zephyr Souza on board with the team. Um, for personal reasons, she ended up leaving the team. She would later go on to found another 40k mod, Grimdark. That happened probably three years later. Uh, we also had Super Trooper on the team. He would later leave to found ICP. We had Soko Lanko. Soko Lanko originally had a Tal mod, but he, he has since abandoned that. Uh, Battlestad and a couple other guys, but those are major guys who have left, unfortunately. This meant that Warhammer 40k Armor 3 mods were starting to increase with different teams working on projects. But TIOW2 is still going strong. The mods that are considered the biggest ones at this point are TIOW, ICP and GDA, but there are many more that deserve a spotlight as well. The next one I'm going to be talking about is ICP. The first modding group that actually reached out to me was ICP, also known as Imperial Conquest Project. Imperial Conquest Project's modding team consists of Soup or Super Trooper who was part of the original TIOW team. So he's very much a veteran of the community and I wanted to know how he got involved. How I started basically, I, uh, I always liked making stuff and then I kind of discovered Blender and you know I was making swords and shit and uh, I saw all these mods you know and I was like hmm I, I want to make something. For Arma. and uh, I saw this Napoleonic Wars mod, and I contacted the uh, the the author of the mod if I can help, and I was like, "Yeah, sure." So I was doing some stuff for him. Uh, I was doing only models, no copying or importation or anything. And then one day he said, "Oh, sorry, man, I, I can't continue because I got like military service." So he he referred to uh, he referred me to the the old there is only war team for. Arma 2 or like OFP, right? And that's how Operation Flashpoint did uh, Arma 1. And so I joined there, I talked to LFH, he was the old TIW lead. Soup was involved early on similar to Gorchard in Arma 3 modding. He became part of the original TIOW and also learned his skills from E50 Panzer. But decided to leave due to problems uploading the content to Steam since you can't transfer ownership and wanted to push out content more consistently. And, you know, I started to learn more about modding with TIW from Panzer, which I'm eternally grateful. I grew more and more impatient that we can't upload because of how the Steam Workshop is. You can't transfer ownership. I was like, okay, um, I'm not going to wait around. I'm going to just, just split to you guys. And uh, that's pretty much how ICP came into uh, existence. ICP or Imperial Conquest Project is a mod that focuses around high quality Guardsman assets. Soup was telling me that he's gone back and made three separate versions of Acadian Guardsman simply because he was not happy with how they looked the first time. Because we're we're on an hour third rendition of the Cadians. Oh yeah, I, so I keep just continuing to find you know these small tweaks that he can make. I, I better keep with. updating the model for the Cadians because I'm I'm not satisfied with it. I, I am I am now though. It's nice to see all the dedication and passion that all these modding teams have in the community. Take a look at some of the results of ICP. sucking my own dick but we'll do it for you don't worry soup as icp developed soup also recruited new modders since and then i recruited uh rogue over here who was making yeah. his own stuff 
Uh, I really liked what he was working on. I liked his style. I'm going to teach this guy some stuff. And uh, I've been teaching him since, and he's been learning very well. Sorry, Rogue. I should have asked you more questions. In terms of what ICP offer, as I said before, they have a priority focus on Guardsman stuff. At the time of recording this, they have Cadian variations for different climates, Scions with different customization, Steel Legion with different customization. There's also the Sons of Sec. They of course have weapons which are balanced for vanilla armor 3, but I'll talk more about that later. One of the things that truly amazed me is the approach the modders go when it comes to making new assets. ICP were telling me they have a Discord dedicated to just spamming images into to use as reference art. But it's not always copy and paste. A lot of these modders have told me that if they don't like something or if it doesn't fit, they would change the design. One of the things ICP showed me was a 40k themed truck they've been working on. We, we actually we have a whole separate Discord where we just post reference images uh, yeah. in like organized channels. Uh, so where we'll have everything. We'll have pictures of every part of every Lehman Rust there is. And, and there's this this everything. little this little truck here the super streamer now i think we must have had at least like 12 hours of debate oh, where everyone, oh, yeah. everyone was sat pitching ideas like oh, I, was, first, I, I, I was adamant it should have a little pillbox on it like that we also wanted tracks but then we argued against it basically yeah. people people look at it and they're like oh yeah this this should drive as a truck but wait it has tracks so it's gonna drive like a tank so people won't yeah. expect it to drive in a certain way so, yeah, we, Right. It, had, it had to have a gun, even if it was a truck. Yeah, you, look yeah. those little, you look at the containers and the mechanic is set, they go fucking storm bolters. And you'll find this model absolutely nowhere. There's, nowhere there's nothing else. like this. This is a unique yeah. made Cannon. polygon by polygon made by me. And you will not find this anywhere. So, so for these for these rivets, Soup literally has to sit there <laughs> and, and he will have to like either like copy and paste strips. Yeah. Every single one of those rivets, I've watched this man sit there and literally... Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that yeah. was taking fucking ages. One thing that truly did impress me from Soup, which I know only few talented developers can pull off, is creating an asset with very little art to go off. Can you pull that out and show that? Because I, I want to highlight that, because I think that's one of your more hidden gems. He went to the trouble of providing the people a fucking outstanding pilot outfit based actually on the, Aeronaut the Imperial Aeronautica game. But this man just looked at the artwork for this uh, Aero like Imperialis Aeronautica game. And there's not a he lot of it. <laughs> he, looked, he just looked at the artwork and went, yeah, all right, and fucking modelled it and killed it. One more thing that I must show, which for many people may not be that exciting, but for me it was, was Soup actually created suspension for the Chimera when going over rocks. It's such a nice little detail that you would miss otherwise. The last thing on ICP is, don't ask them to make Deathcore, they're not a big fan. Anyway, it's time to talk about Age of Darkness. To Tripwire31 who asked me to talk about Age of Darkness, don't worry, I got you bro. I managed to actually speak to the modders of Age of Darkness, Doss and Steve. No, no, I made the, uh, the, um, the angry tall men from space. I haven't been a developer from, from the start, but I've, I've been a follower of the mod um, before I got into development from basically the start. Doss is the head modder of Age of Darkness, or AOD, which he created around the time that new mods were popping up, as I mentioned earlier but he's also a modder in TIOW. I've been a developer in it for about two years nearly now. Um, and I've been a, either a moderator or a person on their disc, you know, just a general follower on their discord since basically the start. We, we've been working to pick up the pieces. Thankfully around that time, we had a, an influx of a lot of people who wanted to come on board. Das is one of them. That man's been a fucking godsend. That dude has a work ethic like a, I don't know. This is going to, I don't know what you're putting on YouTube, so I'm not going to say what I was going to say. No, no, no. Honestly, but you can say whatever you fucking like, anything. That man, that man has a fucking work ethic like a. During that time, there was a little bit of a drought in modding, which is when a lot of the current mods kind of sprang up. I started my own mod team with Steve. Uh, Steve kind of was making models, and I saw him, and I was like, hey, Steve, you want me to put those models in game? And, and then, here we are. And here we are. <laughs> That's how we started. I mean, we were like, actually, this is pretty good. Let's just, let's just make a mod. Let's just keep doing this. So AOD is our mod, which is kind of like a, it's kind of an un unofficial sister's mod to um, TIW. It uses a lot of their uh, stuff as a base. 
Age of Darkness has a primary focus around 30k or the Great Crusade slash Horus Heresy, whichever takes your fancy. Doss said that him and Steve have been focusing on creating assets that work well with TIOW Space Marines, making them more diverse. When we started modding, all the Space Marines had was a heavy bolter, a melter gun that had like a one meter range that wasn't very useful, a plasma gun and a flamer. That's all the Space Marines had. There are far too many to name, but DOS has shown me all the weapons that Age of Darkness offers from different bolters, Volkite weaponry, flamers, auto cannons, etc. But it's not just weapons DOS and Steve have created. They've modeled different helmet crests, customization for your Space Moon helmet, Mark II, IV, and V jump packs that fully work, traitor and loyalist banners. The list goes on for customization, which allows you to look how you want. Of course, you can choose which Legion you want to be, but that depends on the unit you're playing in. More on that in a bit. DOS, however, is very skilled in making vehicles. So I modeled the land speeders. Land speeders were made by me. All of the, every single land speeder was made by me. Fully originally, so all the scripting and stuff was mine. All the modeling and texturing was mine. I, I primarily work on Space Marine stuff and helping make other things. So I made the drop pods. Um, Steve modeled them and I textured them. But what truly impressed me was he made the Cestus assault ram in one fucking day, fully working with opening and closing doors just insane so this is like such a minor like this requires only a few um, scripting and stuff very easy to make and i already had the script for the land speeders i use that as like a basis so it's quite easy to make this but people think oh well you made dino day make a land raider in a day it's like well no a land raider has an entire interior is an extremely large vehicle the Not physics the in armor 3 are like bad enough yeah, um, if you tank, I've been learning how to do tanks recently, well, over the past year or so, and oh, they are unpleasant. Age of Darkness is the go-to mod when you're looking for anything Horus Heresy related, as they're always adding stuff to it. But Doss carried on to tell me about how custom skeletons work in Armor 3, and it's important to listen to this because it explains how the future of Armor 3 modding will be for Warhammer. So the thing with Armor 3 is it's not like other games where you can just like, like with Dawn of War or um, the Unreal Engine and stuff, <clears throat> you can just put a skeleton in that you want, you can just rig a person and it'll just work with the animations you put in. It doesn't really work like that with Armor 3. So custom skeletons are a very recent revelation in the Armor 3 ro uh, modding world and TRW is one of the first kind of mods to push into that, which sounds confusing, but basically is. You create a list of all the bones and the order and what they're connected to in a Word document and um, in a, sorry, a notepad document. And then you also tell the animations what speed they are, they should be, what bones they should be connected to, uh, how they work with each other, um, also in a notepad document. So these notepad documents end up being hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of lines long. And that's just how complicated custom skeletons are for anything that's like human shaped. Custom skeletons sound confusing, there's no doubt about that, but DOS tells me they've managed to crack it. We've kind of reached the holy grail, we figured it out. Me and Web Knight spent, we spent like two weeks not even sleeping, didn't we, Web Knight? Yeah, yeah, in the Mar March or April? I don't yeah, it was, it was about March or April time. We just spent a solid month not sleeping, trying to figure out custom skeletons and fixing bugs and stuff. Now we know how to do it. Yeah, we well, basically have limitless. a framework. Like, yeah. yeah. And if I want to work on something new, I can just contact DOS and we can sit together and think what we can add to Arma that would be really cool. This brings me perfectly onto Web Night. I'll tell you the one that had my jaw to the floor was the one where the dreadnought kneels and a fucking tech priest gets on oh, his yes. back. Oh yes, I, I couldn't <laughs> the believe human gets that. on the back. I, I love believe that. that. I, I was, I was like, fuck off. There's no way someone did this. Like, like yeah, honestly. Web Knight's, Web Knight is our, is our currently our uh, savior of the mods teams at the moment. He came in and he was interested. Me and basically, he was just trying to get stuff to work, and I was like, hey, do you need some help? 
and I came in and I helped him out getting stuff to work. I um, ended up making him a completely new Dreadnought. He was he was using one from Sketchfab. And it looked pretty. It honestly looked really crap. Textures were awful for it. A Sketchfab, yeah. And I came in and I said, "Look, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make you a new one because I, I do see, I see potential. I see you know you're a fun guy. I'm just gonna oh, completely redo it." <laughs> <laughs> and we did it, and he was so happy. Yeah, so, and I decided that I need to do custom skeleton because at that time, I didn't know how to make custom skeletons. And I just, I was browsing a Sketchfab, and a friend of mine said, Yo, look at that uh, Dreadnought model. You think you can handle that? And I'm just like, well, I can try, and that's it. That's, that's, how, that's how I started working on that. Web Knight, to put simply, is a god-tier animator that for some reason hasn't been hired yet by a studio because getting into the gaming industry is a pain. He's basically a freelance animator in the Armor 3 community, meaning he's not part of any modding team and more helps out where he wants and does his own thing. Whilst a few of the modding teams have people who can model, texture and possibly people who can implement things with configs and scripts, animators are a hard thing to come by. In terms of Web Knight's workshop on Steam, he's done his fair amount. As I've said before, he's freelance, so he's done things separate to 40k like Web Knight's droids, also lightsabers and force. There was a poor neglected droid eker that still gives him nightmares, since he never managed to finish it. Fucking hell, why? He made an advanced combat system for humans and then reanimated for the skeletons of the Space Marines. This included a cool finisher for Space Marines, blocking, animations for other weapons like the Thunder Hammer. One of his more recent, well I say recent, but it will be a few months old when I upload this, is the Greenskins mod. This added different types of squigs, orc melee boys, and a knob, which are very fun to play against, but I'll talk more about that later, and yes I know I keep saying that, this video will kill me. One other thing I must mention is how he created the Death Rider. Oh yeah, I had a question about the horses, because uh, I, I looked at your uh, video when you were showing off the horses. Did you get the model from the guy who was, who was doing Yeah, Yano, Yanovich, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I was going to say, because I, I was curious, because I was thinking, oh shit, no, I didn't realise he gave you the model for it, which is awesome. For those of you who don't know who Yanovich is, let me give you a reminder. Now remember kids, if anyone asks, that's one of the soldiers from Disney's Atlantis The Lost Empire. All jokes aside, I really respect Yanovich for letting others use his assets for stuff like armour. It's a nice community. I actually enjoy watching his breakdowns of Warhammer animations. Still seems like yesterday that every animated channel on YouTube got neutered by GW. Anyway, Doss was telling me about one of AOD's crown jewels. Not his bollocks, but something he actually feels has changed modding for Armour 3, a contempt to Dreadnought. I mean, there's two things that are our crowning jewels, which is the the dreadnoughts, which are from AOD. So these are this I would argue, and I genuinely would argue, is one of the most advanced things ever put into Armor Three. That's not me tooting my own horn because I only really made the model and textures and the weapons, whereas uh, Web Knight did all the scripting and the animating. The Contempt of Dreadnought is a masterpiece. Web Knight even gave it a finisher. But it was not the first Dreadnought implemented into Armor 3. In fact, it was the result of a few trials in the Mighty Dreadnought mod. The Mighty Dreadnought mod was our first ever experiment in custom skeletons. Um, so we kind of... We wanted to just kind of make something that was pretty easy, because the difference between a, a Space Marine and a Dreadnought Space Marines need lots of animations. They need to. They need a kneeling animation. They need a um, a running animation. They need a animation for sitting in all the different seats in the game. They need animations for healing themselves. They need animations for healing other people. You know, the list goes on. Whereas a dreadnought only needs about uh, fifteen to twenty animations. You know, walking forwards, walking backwards, walking left, walking right, a few smashes, a few deaths. 
I will be coming back to the modding teams later in the video to talk about a few other things, but I hope this has given some of you an insight into the amount of work that goes on behind the mods and the people doing it. Let's finally move on to units. Alright, uh, Poncha, I believe you have overcharge on that plasma cannon. I'll nail that death guard on top. We'll make a sprint for it. Okay, firing in three, two, one. Go, 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 go. go. Units to put simply are usually a discord server or a group of people to play the mod with, but there is a lot more to it than that. When wanting to play Warhammer Armor 3 mods, you most likely will need a unit to play in as there's not open servers that you can just join when convenient. Units can be very different from one another, and it's important to know what you're looking for. Things that usually differentiate units are beginner friendly, military realism, role play, roles, operations that will be its own segment, mods, time zone and benefits. What I'm going to do is go into detail about each of these. Aren't I nice? Beginner friendly is always important. Armor 3 by its own has many different controls and mechanics to learn. Throw in a couple of mods and it gets even more frustrating. Combine that with trying to join a game, get a loadout and know what you're doing can be overwhelming for new players. Hence, some units dedicate themselves to being beginner friendly. This allows you to learn the basics with someone, meaning that when operations come round, you'll be ready. I've done this myself and it does make a difference, otherwise you might slow down the op for everyone else. Military realism is what it says. Some units love the idea of receiving orders from superiors, falling in line, being promoted, only fine when told to, you get the idea. I personally like the idea of military realism, but leaving a bit for banter and mistakes, as I'm bound to throw a grenade by accident. Roleplay is a funny one. If you want to scream for the Emperor whilst purging the traitors, act like you're in the 40k universe, there are units out there that will do that. Some units don't mind if you have no prior knowledge of 40k and are just looking for some fun. And of course you get the other end of the spectrum as well, inquisitors and commissars running around that if you speak out of turn you will be shot. It's really up to you for what you're looking for. Some units give you the option to play different roles. For example, a unit might say we try to allow everyone to play the Dreadnought or a Commissar. Others may not give you that opportunity. Most units will allow you to switch weapons and customise your look to an extent, but that could depend on the role again. Things like being an apothecary or part of the assault or tactical squad makes a difference. Obviously, I've spoken a bit about mods, but every unit will most likely have a list of mods for you to download to play with them. A lot of this is literally making the game playable. I'm sure any modder watching this would love to give you a full presentation on what it takes to make this work. Duct tape, PVA glue and a hamster running in a wheel is what I've been told. Now just because you're in a guardsman unit may not mean you're using the same mods as another guardsman unit. For example there are a few different guardsman mods to choose from which all vary in design. Different units will have ones they prefer to play with. This might mean different units require different downloads for similar assets. Of course, some units will have their own mods that they only use. This could be stuff they personally made or asked to be made for them like a homebrew chapter. Time zones speak for themselves. Obviously, there's no point if you're in the UK trying to play with someone on a West Coast server. It's going to be crap. God, that just reminds me of the terrible days trying to play CSGO with Russians. They never listened. Even if the unit is your region, check the time operations start, as a UK op might still cater for Americans. Benefits are basically how much your unit is willing to entice you to keep playing with them. Of course, having a regular amount of people playing is important to any successful unit. Some units get away with just having a large loyal player base, however some will need to provide you with incentives to stay as there are many units to choose from. Units may do giveaways or competitions for best screenshot, or give you relic weapons or armour for how long you've been playing with them. They may offer promotions for different roles as well. That's pretty much all there is for units, other than if you want to play as like a certain Space Marine chapter or Guardsman Regiment, you will need to find that unit that offers that. And I want to reiterate, I am going to tell you how to play and join a unit. Now we're moving on to operations or ops. Um, as such, we've also lost contact with the Infiltrator Squad. Your mission is extremely simple. Um, where possible, maintain a low profile. Um, obtain the reports of the three uh, infiltrators, um, and then extract... Aradio, what the fuck are you eating? Back to here. <laughs> He's fist-fucking some tin food <laughs> by the sound of it. <laughs> Your mum has <laughs> 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 wearing the hey, whole ass chicken as a hat. Like that, you piece of shit. 
Damn. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> Fuck me, I've had more dedication in a nun in a fucking library. Fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Fucking Why amazing. I literally just idiot you see, protein bar. You sound like a, <laughs> sound like a prostitute in a whorehouse with her first meal of the week. Always <laughs> 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 oh, fumbling with that condom Who wrapper. Who the fuck's running that fucking prostitute out? Operations are what you are going to be playing. Every unit will run different operations with different scenarios and outcomes. How fun and well structured the operations are is completely up to your Zeus and Eden editor and I will get into that. Luckily the unit I was in was the gold star of quality but that doesn't mean I didn't have bad operations. And this wasn't due to the Zeus or the editor, more just me being an idiot. Let me give you an example. Gonna take two. Yes, radio check. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Precious. Very close to the ground, so I can like jack and fucking break my leg. Yeah. Space Marines don't take fall damage, brother. The Emperor protects. God speed to that Space Marine. That, that's the definition of steel rain. Bollocks. I spawned way too far out. You fucked up. You fucked up good, boy. <laughs> it was very funny looking your body ragdoll though. Yeah, punch, I wouldn't I wouldn't drop out that pass, bud. <laughs> I'm being shot still. So I don't know. I only got one kill in that entire op and died many times and I think it's really important to reinforce that you will have these bad experiences. After that operation I had a great laugh telling everyone how much I screwed up and I've learned from it so I'll be better for next time. Operations usually start out with you joining a server at the requested playtime. As a lot of people have told me Warhammer 40k Armor 3 is held together with spaghetti code and a lot of duct tape. If the game does not like a single asset, it can cause crashes. Some admins are more inclined to help you than others. My unit was very helpful and never started until everybody was in the server. But I'm sure some units will just leave you in the dust trying to connect. Once you're finally in the server, you will select your gear. Depending on your rank, status and role, depends on what you might be given. The stalker bolter? Not a problem? So, uh, oh, fuck it. Guardsman, huh? Yes. Uh, you sure you don't, you're not like Inquisitor Acolytes? You're, uh... I'm I'm on an internship uh, with the, the mechanic. Doing your like mismatched fucking super plasma pistol in pocket. Certain operations may allow you to take different war gear. It's always best to ask what your Zeus says. After you have selected your war gear, you will most likely go for a briefing. But not every operation has a briefing. A briefing is essentially if you've ever gone paintballing in the UK and the marshal guy stands up on like a truck and goes Hey guys welcome to paintball we're gonna make sure everyone has a fun experience today our scenario today is domination we want to make sure everyone has a fun time and if you need any help with your gun or get stuck please put your hand up and contact a marshal we are there to help you. 
I genuinely feel like I've paid for an experience when doing these operations, and I can really appreciate the hard work these guys put in. The briefing will tell you what the scenario is. This could be taking back a city and some lore behind what's happened. A perfect example was us killing some ultramarines for going near one of our forge worlds, and who doesn't love killing the poster child? We can't kill that. We can't kill that as a melt gun. Stop Arami. driving towards it. Arami. It Arami. doesn't work that way. Arami. I'll fucking Arami. After the brief, you will most likely be assigned to a squad, radio check for long and short range, and then your operation will start and you can play. When I say radio check, this is basically how you will communicate over long distance. Proximity talk works with a team speak mod. At the end of the operation, you might have a debrief. This might add some lore to the story for what might come next in the mission. This also allows a chance for people to be promoted or give a chance to give feedback on the operation. Now that's mostly how ops are, but there is one thing I need to talk about, and that's PvP, balance, and lore accurate. The thing is, the 40k and Warhammer was originally created for as a tabletop universe, and then was transferred to video games, so that's why sometimes the reality of first person shooter are like told you that you need to change something. I had a really interesting conversation with DOS, Steve and Web Knight that really did open my eyes when it comes to Warhammer 40k games. They're not practical, but let me elaborate. As Web Knight said, when Warhammer was created, originally it was made for lore and tabletop. Warhammer Fantasy can get away with it, but when you actually take the values from 40k lore and put that into a video game format, it doesn't make much sense. So you have all these things like in the lore, like Space Marine bike units. Um, and this is like a, this is a, something I'm developing for the new update. And I found out very fast that um, bikes are crap in the, t <laughs> in the 40k universe. Because all you have is two bolt bolters facing forward. And it's like, well, that's not very useful. The same goes for Castaferum Dreadnoughts. Because when I was originally working on them, uh, a lot of people said that uh, in a lore, they are pretty slow, right? Like about, and somebody even gave me the numbers. <laughs> I don't remember them exactly. Yeah. So I made, I made them exactly walk like in lore. And apparently, if you are playing in a video game, you don't want to lower accuracy, especially in a, like about the speed, because that thing is so slow that when you play as that one, uh, your entire squad can be across the map and you will still walk. They gave me a bunch of examples from Dreadnoughts to the Cestus Assault Ram that if you put their speeds in game, it's ridiculous. Doing this, you do discover a lot of uh, GW's numbers for how things are so, how fast something is how much armor it has are completely made up who would have thought the idea of using a giant chainsaw with giant shoulder pauldrons in the way obstructing your view makes no sense and it's probably the reason space marine was made in third person but this brings me perfectly onto pvp and balancing and of course i know a lot of people probably like the idea of pvp and armor 3 and so did i but all operations are usually pve other than maybe a zeus having some fun Hello, me. <laughs> Finally, worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary. <laughs> that was an epic battle there, and you just ruined it and come in like that. I'll save you. So why don't you do PvP in Armor 3 Warhammer? All the different mods have different number values when it comes to weapons, so doing PvP balanced is going to be hard. Of course it is possible, but Space Marines can be near invulnerable powerhouses or be one-shot by certain weapons. You then need to think about respawning, friendly fire, and the fact that Armor 3 was just not designed for PvP in mind. Throw in guardsmen, vehicles, and it gets even more complicated to balance, hence why almost all units do PvE. And I actually agree, it's the right decision, but it does make me wonder about any future Warhammer 40k games involving Space Marines. Regardless of being lore accurate with vehicle speeds and armor, I think Space Marines need to be in third person, especially when in melee combat, otherwise you won't even know what's going on. Time to move on to Zeus and Eden Editor. Yo. You have a beautiful face. Thank you. 
Zeus and Eden Editor are basically forward slash game mode 1 in Armour 3. The Eden Editor allows you to create operations and the Zeus is usually someone who controls operations whilst you're playing. Let's start with Eden Editor. Eden allows you to go into a number of maps and essentially test, play around or create an operational scenario. This also can give you the opportunity to create a loadout for a Space Marine or Guardsman to save time for when you join an operation so you can access it quickly, but it's not needed as most units will cater for that. Most of the time, Eden Editor is used for creating operations and scenarios. Don't ask me to explain how to make an operation as that literally is a whole other issue. Sometimes it can look simple like placing a couple of enemies that attack you, but it can go deep into scripts for more complicated things like Inquisitor ships spawning in bombing the planet. Lastly, creating operations comes with its own bugs that the server may not like. So what's a Zeus? I don't know if it stands for anything other than being the guy who can lightning strike anyone they wish. Enforce the rules real quick, Jordi. Okay. Because he is British. But the Zeus is your game master. Depending on the size of your unit, it can be more than one Zeus during an operation to help manage things, or certain units may switch out people being the Zeus to give others a break. The job of the Zeus is to create exciting and fun operations using Eden. This can involve putting down buildings and the AI, setting up objectives, scenarios, and vehicles for you to use during the operation. For some operations, they might even set up a mini campaign or story for you to play. For example, there might be optional objectives for you to do that can give you benefits for the next operation, like some Imperial Guard AI fighting with you, or better weapons. The Zeus will also play as the enemy to keep you in check, support you with airstrikes which could be part of the operation, or roleplay in certain situations. For example, we had a little border control scenario that was a lot of fun to roleplay in. But that's mostly it for Zeus and Eden. If you want to know more about it, I recommend you look up some videos or tutorials. Some units will offer to teach you to be a Zeus, for now we're moving on to how to join or play. So you want to know how to play Warhammer 40k Armor 3 mods? Well make sure you've watched the part of the video on units, because it's important. Now I'm going to assume you already have Armor 3, because if you don't, you will need to buy it of course. Just to make things as simple as possible so you guys know what I'm doing before I go in detail, you join a unit, get a mod pack from them, import the mod pack to Armour 3 Launcher, install Task Force Radio, obviously it depends if the unit uses it, and then you play. There are other little details, but that is the main premise. The first thing you need to do is either join the TIOW Discord or the ICP Discord. TIOW is better for finding Space Marine units, ICP is better for finding Guardsman units. Links to these will be in the description. Agree to the rules by clicking the thumbs up and then select the unit recruitment channel. There then will be a massive list of advertisements for units. Each of these will have differences so find what you're looking for and then join. This is where things become unpredictable between units. Most likely, but not guaranteed, someone will message you and guide you through what's next. If no one has messaged you, try to DM someone who runs the unit and if you still get no response, I recommend you switch unit. Someone should give you the mod pack to download, but if not, look for the mod pack download channel on their Discord. This download will select all the mods that the unit is using from the Steam Workshop, and it saves you having to click them all individually. As I said before, you need a lot of mods to play Armour 3 Warhammer, and it's not just as simple as downloading one from the Steam Workshop. So download the file from your unit, either from someone giving it to you, or find a channel that has the downloads, and remember where it is. For most of you, it will be in your downloads folder. After that, open Armour 3 Launcher, click on Mods, then click More, and Import List of Mods from File. Locate where you have your file downloaded, once again this may be in the Downloads file, the reason I have so many here by the way is because they get updated and you need to replace them. 
Select the file you downloaded and click open. It may ask you to subscribe or replace mods so agree to all. Then it should start installing, but if this is your first time the downloads may take a while as there is a lot. Assuming that's all gone well, you will then need to install the Task Force Radio mod for TeamSpeak as most units will use this. It should have been subscribed to when you imported the file into Armour 3 Launcher, but you will then need to manually install it. Make sure you have TeamSpeak downloaded before you do this. First thing you need to do is follow the path that I have on screen. This will take you to the installer. Now exclamation workshop may not appear in your folders, so I recommend you type task force radio into the search bar and that should direct you to the mod file. Then click and go into the file and select TeamSpeak and the file should be in there. Click on it and follow the install options. Once that's installed, TeamSpeak should be set up for Armour 3, but once again check with your unit to see if they use it and ask them for help. If that's all done, you pretty much just need to wait until your operation starts, join the server IP or name, put the password in if it has one and join. However, one last thing to note is if you are playing as an Astartes, you need to create an Armour 3 profile with a Space Marine head, otherwise you will have a head in between your legs. Same goes for a Guardsman, they need a standard human head and not the Astartes one. I'm fully aware myself this is not the best guide out there, but it's the only guide out there. I will try to help people in the comments section as much as possible, but please try to rely on the unit you join for help. Anyway, I now want to talk about the unit I actually play in. Oh yeah, What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> you gave me the crescent <laughs> What did you expect? <laughs> You're gonna drop into a military base to draw people out of a city? Once it is dead? Holy shit! Can you shut the fuck up? I hate that music. Which way is the military base? <laughs> AV is the unit I play in, also known as Armager's Vigilant. Armager's Vigilant is a semi-serious unit, but I think they might have confused the word serious with special. Maximus. Yeah? Wanna fight? Okay. Punch or press, press, press shift G. <laughs> Where's the uh... Oh shit! Yes. <laughs> How many did you kill? You killed all of them! What happened? Respect. <laughs> and getting everyone together for a briefing is like a parent-child relationship. There's not even that much of a brief that's needed. Right, gather around. Story time. Wait, wait. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, is everyone doing melee? What the fuck did no. that? No. No. Right, Actually, hey, okay. This right. is such a shit briefing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it> is. <laughs> okay. Everyone uh, is running around and dying. Okay, next, next person to fucking oh, kill no, someone is having a time out. work the way you think you did. Oh shit, that's my that's side. It, that's it, that's it. Come back over. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Oi. Oi, retards. Right. Gather round. That's it, there you go. Dial it back for two seconds, you're alright. I have one more question. I will look like, uh, like to humbly, I would like to humbly request to fly that. The Cestus or the Nephilim? The Nephilim. No, that's my job. Fuck Levy. you, retard. I will do so. There's a lot of banners on that thing. Oh, oh, oh. What's happening? He cut son? the chapter master. Like, What's happening? Ah. Oh my okay, fucking my god. Oh my god, no! <laughs> Dirty! <laughs> It took me so long! It took me so long! No one gets the Nephilim! But unlike a lot of other units, AV was the first unit with a homebrew chapter, and it was also one of the biggest ones back in the day. They do have a lore archive that gives a little backstory to the chapter, which I have read myself. As far as I'm aware, AV is the only unit that has access to Primaris gear, whereas other units have to use Firstborn equipment. So why am I talking about Armager's Vigilant? Well, it's for two reasons. Firstly, to thank them. Dio, who is one of the head guys in AV, is literally the reason I've been able to make this video and it would not have been possible without him. He got me talks with modders, he answered any and all my questions, so I truly do thank him for that. The second reason I'm talking about AV is well to offer you guys to join. Well look, you, you did the ammo linkage and it looks so fake. Well... He tried, alright? He gave it a good effort. I mean, he tried, and I, I give him the credit. I mean, it's not horrible, but it looked like he did the torso of it and then gave up. <laughs> it looks like he did the torso, therefore, ah. 
Actually, hold on, I'll go get in this somehow. <laughs> well, because I mean, like, the torso is like all this effort went into it, and like, the arm joints were too, but then the weapons and the legs, he just gave up. <laughs> Well, well, I, I mean, that, I I mean yeah. Gatling cannon's made out of Pringle cans. <laughs> I, yeah. Are those missiles fucking googly eyes? <laughs> <laughs>
Should we just leave them be, or could we try and do with the them? sensitive nature of the world as it is for the minute, and how vital it is to this sector? Um, we want to keep civilian panic to a minimum. So if you do come across any that are non-hostile, leave them be and try not to be spotted. Yo, what's that? Civilian? Nope. Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> no, witnesses. No witnesses. <laughs> Good man. No, DR's are chaplain. He's meant to be our role model. He's meant to be ten times better than this. He should be going as fast as he can through these trees. Yeah, don't hold back, you know. Yeah, go, go full All right, speed. Goodbye. You seem to be impressed into a tree. Was, was that the chaplain? <laughs> that was the chaplain. Well, where do we go from here? He's back here. <laughs> I think he's still alive. Okay, I'm back. So first and foremost, no, I did not ram a tree. I was run over by Noble. The last oh. thing I heard was, get <laughs> out of the way, and then was dead. That was the last <laughs> thing I've seen. I can't move. Once sure, it's sure, long. sure. We, we believe you. Where is the tree? <laughs> <laughs> You can't just live with a lonely person, dude. Oh I'm just building this shit. Hey, Sam. Oh, shit, that's going oh. good, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the fucking I don't know what they are. What the fuck is wrong with your hands? <laughs> uh, Thunderclaws. <laughs> Levy, where'd you go? Ah, yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> gone. That's gone. That's gone. So, uh, yeah, Captain Master is dead again. Uh, he's underneath the, uh, the bike. Chapter Master is dead. Long live the Chapter Master. Yep, long live the Chapter Master. It's a common, it's a common theme in our chapter that the Chapter Master dies. Uh, I promote <laughs> Levy to Chapter Master, so he Thank dies. Thank you. <laughs> um, right. Okay, long live the Chapter Master. Uh, On the um, new Chapter Master, we're gonna change the, okay, change the unit to Health and Safety Organization. What? Who's pinging around? Go around. Oh my god. What? Fire. The Inquisition has arrived. Uh oh. So, uh, the Inquisition's arrived. That's never really a good sign. Nah. Uh oh. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh. Okay, how did I survive this? <laughs> but the gameplay, in my opinion, is a great substitute for Eternal Crusade dying. The community is what gives you the gameplay. The mods are just there to add immersion. Big battles, playing with your friends, and until we get Space Marine 2, I think this is where I will scratch that itch of mine. In regards to what's coming in the future, I want to show you what some of the modders are working on. Our overall plan is to make the Eternal Crusade that they didn't make. <laughs> <laughs> it's to make a, a, a game mode where you can play with your friends with, you know, 50 other people and fight to hordes upon hordes of enemies. Returning back to the modders, I want to give everyone a bit of a teaser for what each of the modding teams are working on and what the future of Warhammer Armor 3 mods will be like. Of course, I want to reiterate, all these people have lives and jobs and do this in their free time. Some of this stuff may take a couple of months to years to implement, so please take it all with a grain of salt and keep your expectations realistic. Some of the modders may even take a break and not come back, so nothing is confirmed, but they are still worth supporting as much as possible. Anyway, a few of the modding teams have told me what they're working on and I'm excited to share with you what could be coming. I'm going to be talking about ICP first as they have a lot of big plans and content they're working on. What I want to bring your attention to is their vision. 
One of the big things that you get with particularly modded Armour 3 is that everybody wants to go for the big flashy stuff. And that's all right, that's fine. The Space Marines are a massive pull in TIOW. The Necrons, the stuff like that, that's great. But I've run a couple of units myself. I've played in a few. Dio can attest to this because he's probably suffering through it right now. The balance is a bastard because Armour 3 is designed to be a realistic milsim. Soup started this whole thing pulled up his britches and went, right, how can we get really cool Warhammer stuff, but still make it work in Armour 3? Super and Rogue do their best to make ICP as out of the box as you can with the ballistic values and stuff like that, which is yeah, pretty much massively helpful. Vanilla. Yeah. So you can pretty much take Ace, a Compat, an ICP, and just play. It, it's pretty much balanced to vanilla, but in the end, a lasgun is a lasgun. In the future, ICP plan to replace every vanilla aspect of Armour 3 with the 40k equivalent, as it says on their Steam page. The reason they are doing this is because it comes back to what I said before about balance. It's hard with a Stasis, Orcs, Vehicles and Guardsmen. Hence why ICP are trying to make a mod that replaces every Armour 3 gun, vehicle, etc. with the 40k version with balanced number values, all under one mod. This means that in a unit, you won't have two different guardsmen with guns and vehicles fighting each other with unbalanced numbers. There's no doubt it's a huge undertaking, but if done correctly, you would only need to download ICP and Ace Combat to play. In terms of what ICP have been working on recently, as of recording, I've seen a Valkyrie and Lehman Russ. Both have tweaked designs instead of just copying 100% though. There's also a Basilisk and a Medusa, all of which are looking really nice. They are slowly working to replace everything, but one of ICP's more long-term plans is to actually create a server. I really hope that when the server becomes a thing that this will be used extensively to, you know, have like cool tunnel fights or like fucking pipe fights. <laughs> we have two options. Um, Liberate, liberation was Liberation in. or, or King of the Hill. Okay. Liberation is basically the map starts off with all the towns or certain key locations have markers, and it's basically a paint the map you start off you start off with like in, in vanilla you start off on an aircraft carrier with some basic um vehicles and guns and stuff you basically have to take over the map bit by bit like counter insurgents yeah, town, town by town their plan is after downloading just icp and ace combat you could hop into a live server which would not be at certain times and just play a liberation game mode they are doing this because icp have been around so long they understand the unit lifestyle is not for everyone and they want to give people a choice so instead of joining a unit and waiting for operation times, if you fancy playing Armour 3 Warhammer, you could just join the server, maybe meet up with some people or go single player, take back a town and hop off. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can pop on by yourself, you know, if you, if you yeah. want. And that's what we want to do with the mission. We want to do a, like a campaign style thing. Yeah with name characters that we spoke about earlier. Of course, there's no point to having a server if you don't have the atmosphere to go with it. One of the biggest downsides I've found of Armour 3 Warhammer is the maps. There are a few 40k buildings which are great, but the overall map is still Armour 3. It does ruin the Warhammer experience and ICP have recognised this. This is why they are currently working on a very big map that is going to have all original custom Warhammer assets. Whenever you look at an Armour 3 bundle asset, it just takes you out of the 40k setting. Because what Sub is wanting is he wants to populate an entire map. What is it, 16 by 16 kilometers? Uh, no, it's, I think it's 8 by 8 kilometers. Oh, eight, well, still 8 still, by 8 kilometers. Still, it's, it's a pretty fucking huge map. Is, and he's yeah. planning on, you know, every single asset there being made by hand. Having a map will help with their server idea, but in general, it will give the community a fully Warhammer themed map to play on, which is definitely needed. One last thing on ICP is they are always looking for new modders to join their team for scripting and modeling. If you guys want to see what ICP are regularly working on, I recommend you join their Discord. And once again, the link is in the description. If you see any rats around Armour 3 Discords, you know they're OGs. But we're going to move on to Age of Darkness now. So Armour 3 is what I call the, um, well, me and Steve call the game that makes you want to kill yourself. Doss and Steve have told me they're always checking if anything new gets added to the Horus Heresy that they need to make. But they also do Primaris stuff, and they recently made the Primaris Outriders. And uh, yeah, they're not easy to use. We're just going to be using bikes. Ah, oh, alright. So I'm going to crash a shit ton then, okay. <laughs> Wait, no. Back it up. We're just using bikes. What are you fucking serious? 
Yeah, these are the, the this is the you alpha off, test you know, for them bikes. <laughs> With the guinea pigs. <laughs> They're a lot better than the other bikes. Alright boys, remember top speed is a lot faster than the Oof. other ones. How how are you meant to aim with this? Alright boys, gun it. First objective is 3.8 kilometers away. Good job, Riven. Uh, Riven, I, am I even on your screen? Uh, you were. I elected to ignore you. Well, I'm not medding, so if I'm... You... <laughs> oh, you oh. hit rocks at speed, you're fucked. They're always looking to add stuff that makes a difference. For example, transports and vehicles are always ones they're working on. We are making some air transports, but it's going to take quite a while. Because a lot of the units are getting larger and larger, so I'm going to say, like, my unit has, like, 60 people on average. It's not easy to fly everyone around in land speeder storms. So you can only fit, like, 10 people in these land speed or, sorry, 4 people in these land speeder storms. There's 2 on this side, 2 on this side. So when you're transporting like 60 people across the field, it's, uh, I mean, you can use drop pods, but drop pods are a one-way system. Some vehicles are easier to make than others, depending on if it needs an interior and the scripting. As of recording, they've made the Storm Eagle and the Xiphon. If you want to check out what Age of Darkness are working on, there will be a link to their Discord in the description. The reason I've not mentioned TIOW here is because DOS and Web Knight help make things for TIOW, so when I say Web Knight's next, a lot of what he will make will go into TIOW. Maybe in five years. Since the mod first started, the main enemies you would be fighting is either human-sized orcs, traitor guardsmen, death copters, stomper, chaos space marines, and dreadnoughts. They are all great to fight against, but after many years, you do crave something new. This brings me back to the greenskins update that Web Knight made, as he explains the reasons for making it. If I'm playing 40k with my friends, I was bored to fight only against Chaos Space Marines. The thing is that the Space Marines doesn't have a proper enemy to fight, except the Chaos Space Marines. That's our big push. So you'll see this in the next coming months. Um, we're pushing um, me and Web Knight. We're calling it like the enemy unit phase of Armor Free, where we just make stuff that isn't playable but is meant to be used um, as enemies. The thing is that like we are not only expanding the enemies to fight against but with each enemy we are actually bringing the new uh gameplay mechanics like we are not thinking about okay so basically what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do an orc with a custom skeleton that basically will just stand and shoot as a normal armor ai right no we are actually thinking about uh okay so how the player will approach this enemy so what this enemy should like what kind of animation this enemy should have. And every single stuff that we are planning or already made it was made um, with the thoughts in our head that it should bring something new and fresh to Arma. We will make a lot of Xena stuff, especially the orcs and Tyranids will come. Right now I'm working on a Gene Stealer. That will be the first yeah. enemy that we will put in game. That, that Gene Stealer is terrifying. So the models come from a variety of places. Either we were given permission to use them um, from the creator, because unfortunately none of us are sculptors, so things like organic things are just not easy for us to make. One thing I want to note is Web Knight and DOS are looking for sculptors to join them, so if you're familiar in creating organic models, I'm sure they would love to hear from you. Just don't ask about Terminators, as I think it gives Web Knight a seizure. I'm only joking, go spam him as much as possible that you want Terminators. That's the main thing why we are not making for now Terminators, because um, I was bombarded with the request to make Terminators make after Terminators. my Dreadnought came out. Oh, Jesus, I, I, oh my god. Make Primaris Terminators. Yeah, Primaris Marines or Terminators, and don't get me wrong, they are cool, but 
Um, we already have like a walkable, t walkable tanks. Why I should make another one? I know that the Terminators are not the same thing as a Dreadnought, but still, it will be based in so the gameplay terms. Needed right now. Yeah, like, they're not needed. We will get to it, but yeah, yeah, we will make them. What people don't realize is Terminators will play gameplay-wise very similar to normal Astartes in Armor 3. It would require a whole new custom skeleton and animations, and this time could be put to far more useful things like new enemies. So what are Doss and Web Knight working on right now? Well, as of recording, I think they're taking a break from the Tyranids, and instead, due to Web Knight's name, they are making something more fitting. And uh, you get out, and you, you, you know, your squad commander says we need to get a relic. <laughs> <laughs> from from oh, the ground. Oh my god. So then you go in and you, you fight lots of orcs, right? And you get this relic and then uh, you know you're leaving the razor back and you get up and there's a whole like forty people fighting loads of chaos space marines. <laughs> <laughs> so you you got your, your quick decision, you gotta decide you decide to join the fight. <laughs> oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> you see that you make, artillery the, the would would be perfect <laughs> instead you, you'd of you make Miguel direct. proud. for your dad. Oh, that and then, and then I'm having a heart attack, I'm sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Web Knight never fails to amaze me. The knights are just incredible. Yes, he did use Freeblade to get some reference on how to make them, but they play smooth and are extremely fun. He's already started working on Titanfall 2 finisher animations for the knight, which just make me laugh. It's not always new stuff like the Night Web Knight does, sometimes he goes back and updates existing mods. Take a look at what he recently added to the Advanced Combat mod. Oh no! He's winning! Oh god. Holy shit! That is so fucking cool. If I've not mentioned it already, Web Knight's Discord and YouTube channel will be in the description, and I definitely don't want you to spam that you want Terminators there, okay? War crimes, Fuck equipment, it. vehicles, yeah. all authorized. Oh, That's why the best is fucking hard. Hard. You know, I never thought I would get to this part in the video. I've been working on it for at least four months, and it's been a journey. I've met a lot of really nice people and it's been a pleasure to talk to all of them and it's given me a lot of time to reflect on my content, my mistakes and YouTube. But the Warhammer Armor 3 community has been amazing and I wanted to make a video that showed that and I hope people watch this in years to come. In terms of what I'm going to do next, I think it might be PlayStation's Dreams Warhammer copyright stuff or Warhammer content in VR or a Vermintide review. I have been wanting to make the odd speculation video again on Warhammer games like the Dawn of War 4 video because a lot of my OG fans know that I get hard for doing stuff like that. Of course I will take suggestions as well. I might even return to Armor 3 modding a few years later to see how stuff has changed. Anyway, I feel there's a right way to end this video.
Truth. Yeah, right. Fine. Alright. Nice. So, uh, hey, Punch. Uh, do you fancy a banana? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not close enough. <laughs>